Welcome to Corel Painter Sergeant vs. Master Course, an in-depth series where we will learn about the Sergeant vs. tool set and how to apply them on different subjects such as still life, portraiture, architecture and landscapes. Our classes will have a gradual level of complexity, from simple sketching to more advanced techniques. Whether you are a beginner or an advanced artist, you are welcome to stay with us. We believe there is something for everyone in this course. It's good to see you again. Now that you have learned how to do realism sketches in a simple, minimalist way, I think you are ready to learn how to increase the level of complexity of your sketches and studies, transforming them into more interesting works while keeping solid fundamentals. Because this is a course specific about the sergeant brushes, we are not going to cover art theories and fundamentals, however, I can quickly point out a few things. Here are some basic ways you can add complexity to your art. 1. Composition, creating a balanced, intricate composition or layout, in other words, placement of the different elements, balance or imbalance if you want to create tension, um, great rhythm, lines, implicit shapes, and so on. Um, 2. Adding great lighting to your scene, the mood, whether beautiful, cold, warm or scary, helps to draw the viewer into your work. 3. Having a fancy or solid color palette. A lot of us humans are attracted to colors and they have a language of their own, helping to reinforce key ideas you want to pass along the artwork. 4. Having one or several elements that draw attention in the artwork. An interesting character, a vehicle or a silhouette, something unusual or that tells a story. Interesting and or consistent textures and brushwork. Simplification. Yes, I know this may sound strange, but when you are able to simplify things significantly, in some cases, it increases the complexity of your work. Simplifying things is in itself a task of complexity. And that's what the great painter Sargent did in his works, for example. I could go on, but you get the picture. In this class, obviously, we will focus on brushwork within the Sargent brushes set. We will use a simple subject to demonstrate how you can go from simple to complex artworks by going a bit more polished and detailed. We will use an identical framework to the minimalist realism sketch, but instead of compressing lighting, values, colors and doing careless shapes, we are going to apply three important keys. A. Details are important and should come to life gradually. B. Lighting, value and color should be applied carefully and gradually as we progress the overall work. C. Shapes and edges should be carefully done. Take your print screen. This is a cropped version of a snapshot I took on a garden earlier, th earlier this autumn. As usual, I tried to have the lighting looking as natural as possible. And ideally the shadows should have been lighter and bluer, but I'll try to do something like that while painting. So here we see the order of the planes we will work with. 1. The ground. 2. The leaves and a few pieces of grass marked in red. Um, 3. More of the grass, twigs and some leaves. And 4. The leaves closer to the viewer. We will work on a one-to-one -one scale so we can compare what happens with the brush strokes during the process. Our brush of choice is a speckle grainy hard drip. I have two important notions to point out. 1. If you work all in one layer, you get the best out of this brush because you will have the bristles texture and effortless bendability from medium to low saturation as you have seen on the apple painting demo in our second class. 2. Working across multiple layers. 
um, we lose the amazing blendability of the brush as well as the bristle effects. But because I wanted to understand the process of what's going on with the brush strokes as well as the choices that led to the final results, I will work with the second method. And doing so, we get a softer, more mattified look overall. Working on this method also makes the workflow considerably slower. Well, I liked very much the result and I would say it's totally worth it. So even though we lost the blendability, there is a way of cheating to create the illusion that it still exists when working across multiple layers. By in fact, making the brush work in a gradient. So lower the resaturation between 5 and 1% or some very low level that will depend on your brush signature, how much pressure you apply while painting, in my case I am on a very soft end. I recommend you to do some doodling to test out what works for you. Go to the blending settings and choose fade. Forget about everything else in there. Fade will allow you to have a gradient exactly like the sergeant brush, starting in transparency and ending in density of the color you choose. These are our basic brush mechanics. Shadows Shapes Color gradients Blending with dabbing. In this case, when you are having difficulties blending the colors, you can use dabbing. So make a larger brush size and then just dab it between the colors and they shall blend. For texturing, you can use dabbing, small circles, short curvy lines. I recommend very much that when you apply texturing, don't have straight edges. Um, try to make them a little bit more organic. So let's get started. You can make a drawing or doodle if you prefer to use it as a guideline or to be more accurate. I prefer to go freely and improvise where I need to. I start by finding the average or dominant color of the ground. And by average, I also mean average in terms of values between the lightest and the darkest points. Remember um, the process of finding the colors in our previous class? I will use that all the time during this process. First we find a hue, then the value range, and last the saturation range. And we may try to find the color as many times as necessary until we are satisfied with the color we pick. Then from here, I'd like to start applying some foundation shadows. Remember to make them in a way so they can be overlapped by the upcoming shapes.
Now let's start working on some of the structure or textures we see here. When dealing with complex texturing or details, don't be overwhelmed. You can always break down those areas and choose one set of elements to work with first, then another set of elements, and then so on. Let's, for instance, work on all green points. These are so few and small that you can as well add the highlights and color gradients all together. You will see me many times working on one layer for certain areas or details, but feel free to work across multiple layers if that helps you. It is very important that you trust your gut feelings and eyes about how you see color, shape and lighting. It is very important that you train your eyes to be sensible to nuances and details, structure and so on. If you even as much imagine that you have seen a particular color on a particular spot, well, just add it to your image. It's all about your arti artistic intuition and perception, and that is what will make your work unique. Now we have seen some parts of the ground are more greyish rather than bluish, so let's add some new ones for these spots. A lower the resaturation a bit more. If you need, you can also lower the layer opacity to adjust it accordingly to your perception. What happens as you do this is that you see your colors are starting to become complex, as you see the underlying tones. Now let's work on another set of elements for the ground. Let's do some stones. We can make it easier by choosing to work with all stones that are a certain color. For example, I pick the gray to start with. And then we do the blue ones. And then the tiny ones and overall tiny details. And we fill the space mostly by dabbing, giving the gist or the idea that there are some tiny grain around. Now it is a good time to polish the overall shading of the bigger stones and ground. And we can finish by adding some texturing and lighting to the bigger stones. The shadows on the ground are not yet complete, but I will come back to them later to polish what is left. We move on to the next plane and do some leaves shapes with the average or the dominant color. The brush mechanics will now be basically a repetition or a refinement of what you have seen me using for the ground work. And once we are done with the shapes, we can go texturing. You can break this part of the work by doing first the basic shape and then doing a layer with color gradients and then a third layer um, with the texturing. You can do this for all leaves of the set and remember to work one leaf at a time. 
In my case, because the lighting seems to be very simple for these elements, I finished the color gradients, texturing all together by working on one leaf at a time, mostly in one layer. I would work across multiple layers and follow the previous tip um, of doing the gradients and texturing separately if I have found the lighting in these areas to be complex for my skills. The next planes 3 and 4 are simply a continuation of this process. Because I choose to go freely in this demo sketch, some elements require improvising, such as the case of this leaf. and again, more improvising to improve my composition. We we'll go back to the background layer and fill in some missing gaps with some simple short strokes and dabbing. Here we also finish any edges that we need to. And we add the final touch of lighting, a very light cold hue, um, a very low opacity layer in overlay mode on the left side, and a very light warm hue in low opacity overlay mode on the right side. It is barely visible, but it gives overall more dimension to the lighting. And we look about and do any small details that we might have missed during the process and that's basically finishing the work. Summary of our process In regards to the process of adding complexity to your works, break down the planes of your reference image from the furthest to the closest one to the viewer. For each plane, break it down again into smaller parts or sets of elements. In the case of complex lighting, such as in this subject, um, break down the stages you will work on the shadows in complicated areas. On the ground, for example, we first work the overall basic shadow, then later on the shadows cast by the stones, and later during the process we polished some different shading areas. The same can be applied for highlights, should you have areas with complex lighting that are mostly in the light. In the case of texturing, to make it easier for you, first you have a shape in the average color, and then you build the color gradients of that shape or element, and last, you apply the final touches of texturing. So we have come to the end of our fourth class and you have learned how to add complexity to your works 
by breaking down the process into simple, manageable steps to paint most subjects. On our next class, we will study and talk about landscapes. Thank you so much for watching. Corel Painter and I hope this class has been helpful to you. Stay creative, stay positive and inspired.